The Cloud Kingdom The Clark family, consisting of Rose, Martin, and their three children, Rosemary, Rosalie, and Randy, embarked on their much-anticipated vacation to Miami. Despite their varied personalities, they shared one common trait, an undeniable sense of adventure. Rose, the energetic matriarch of the family, had meticulously planned every detail of their trip, from the moment they stepped foot in the airport to their activities in Miami. Martin, on the other hand, harbored a secret fear of the sea stemming from his superstitions about the Bermuda Triangle. He vehemently insisted on flying to their destination, much to Rose's amusement. As they navigated through the bustling airport terminal, Rose led the way with unwavering excitement, while Martin trailed behind, nervously scanning the departure board. Come on, dear, let's not keep the Miami sun waiting, Rose teased, nudging Martin playfully as they approached the gate. Martin chuckled nervously, adjusting his collar as he glanced around. Well, you know me, always preferring the quick and safe route, he replied, his tone laced with feigned nonchalance. Rose rolled her eyes, shooting him a knowing look. Oh, please, Martin, we all know you're just avoiding the sea because of your Bermuda Triangle nonsense. Martin scoffed but a hint of sheepishness flickered in his eyes. Nonsense, you say? Well, I prefer to call it cautiousness. Their banter continued as they settled into their seats on the plane, with Rosemary and Rosalie already engrossed in their devices and Randy quietly observing the scene. As the plane taxied down the runway, Martin's grip on his armrest tightened, prompting Rose to pat his hand reassuringly. Relax, dear. We'll be in Miami before you know it. Martin nodded, though his expression remained tense. I just hope the pilot knows to avoid any mysterious triangles, he muttered, earning an eye roll from Rose. As the Clark family settled into their seats on the plane, the atmosphere was filled with a mix of excitement and playful banter. Come on, Dad, admit it. You're just afraid we'll get swallowed up by the Bermuda Triangle, teased Rosemary, her laughter ringing through the cabin. Martin tried to maintain his composure, though his discomfort was evident. I'll have you know, young lady, that the Bermuda Triangle is no laughing matter, he retorted, though his attempt at seriousness was met with even more laughter from his children. Rose ever the peacemaker, leaned over to Martin, a mischievous twinkle in her eye. Remember our honeymoon in Miami, darling? You didn't seem so afraid of the sea back then. Martin chuckled sheepishly, scratching the back of his neck. Well, that was different. I was young and foolish. Rose raised an eyebrow, a smirk playing at her lips. So you married me when you were foolish? Should I be offended? Martin quickly backtracked, his cheeks flushing pink. No, no, of course not. I meant I was foolish for not realizing so many things about life, about us. Their exchange was interrupted by Randy, who couldn't resist joining in on the fun. Hey, Dad, did you know my karate coach is older than you? And he's way cooler. Martin chuckled, shooting a playful wink at Rose. Well, clearly age is just a number, right? And Ike how much you all appreciate me, he said, winking at Rose. Rosalie, I appreciate you the most, smiling at Dad. Rose approached Martin, her eyes filled with affection as she leaned in to kiss him lightly on the cheek. I appreciate you very much, my dear, she whispered her words carrying a warmth that melted away any lingering tension. Rosemary and Rosalie playfully reached out to their mother. We don't feel very appreciated now, they said in unison. Rose smiled, pulling her children into a group hug. 
Would this be a good group hug now, Randy? She teased, casting a loving glance at her husband. Randy, unable to resist the opportunity for a playful jab, interjected with a grin, This is too much. Stop it now. Rose turned to him with a serious expression. What? Can't a mother show affection to her son? She teased, her eyes twinkling mischievously. Besides, since when did having a black belt in karate mean I can't be affectionate? Before Randy could respond, Rose leaned over and planted a quick kiss on his cheek, eliciting a laugh from the nearby passengers. Randy chuckled, shaking his head at the playful banter. Mom, you're really exaggerating. We're on a plane, he remarked though his smile betrayed his amusement. As Rosemary excitedly pointed out the rainbow in the distance, the vibrant colors stretching across the sky, the mood in the cabin shifted slightly. Martin, ever the cautious one, furrowed his brow. This doesn't look good, he murmured, his eyes scanning the horizon. Rainbows often come after a storm. Rose, however, was undeterred by his concern. Oh, Martin, don't be such a worrywart, she chided gently, her gaze fixed on the dazzling display outside the window. Just look at how spectacular it looks. Randy, ever the pragmatist, simply shrugged. It's just a rainbow, Dad, and a few drops on the window. Nothing to worry about. But before anyone could react, the plane began to shake violently, causing Rose to grip Martin's hand tightly in fear. "'What's happening?' she exclaimed, her voice rising in panic. "'It hasn't rained here for months!' The stewardess rushed down the aisle, her face pale with concern. But before she could reach them, the turbulence intensified, sending trays and belongings flying through the air. Martin's expression hardened as he quickly instructed his family to fasten their seat belts. Everyone be prepared for the worst, he said, his voice firm despite the chaos around them. As the Clark family slowly opened their eyes, they were met with an unexpected sight. Clouds. Clouds of all shapes and sizes surrounded them, and to their astonishment they were sitting on one. Wide-eyed with disbelief, Rosemary voiced the question on everyone's mind. Did we go to heaven? Rosalie's voice trembled with uncertainty. Does this mean I'm dead? Martin's earlier warnings now seemed prescient as he turned to Rose with a grim expression. I told you this would happen, but you didn't want to listen. But Rose, ever the optimist, sought to reassure her family. It's good that we're all together, she said, her voice steady despite the surreal situation. But what do we do now? Randy, always ready to take action, stood up with determination. Let's be ready. I have a black belt. I'll fight. Let's stick together. Rose couldn't help but chuckle at his bravado. Who do you intend to fight, my dear? She asked, gesturing to the billowing clouds around them. I think we're safe here. As the Clark family took in their surroundings, they marveled at the delicate and fine clouds beneath them, some strong enough to support their weight while others barely reached their knees. The air was infused with a refreshing scent of spring. Rosalie, ever curious, voiced her question. Will these clouds produce snow? Randy, always focused on practical matters, brushed off her inquiry. That's the last thing we should care about. We need to figure out how we're leaving from here and what direction to go. Rosemary, enchanted by their ethereal surroundings, exclaimed, I could live here. I would build a house right on this cloud. Suddenly, a voice echoed through the air. So far... This is my house and mine alone. Another voice quickly chimed in. Calm down, Corey. No one wants your house. Martin's eyes widened in surprise. Did you hear that? Someone is talking. Randy, ever the protector, scanned their surroundings. Show yourself, you hideous creature. 
the voice responded indignantly, you are the one who's hideous. Look at you with that dirty black hair and those filthy clothes. How can you wear clothes so dirty from the grass of the earth? Rose, with her gentle nature, couldn't help but be intrigued by the voices coming from the clouds. What a fine voice they have, she remarked, her curiosity piqued. They are probably some beautiful children. Come out, dears, she called out gently. Don't hide any more. We won't do you any harm. Corey, uncertain of how to proceed, turned to his friend Cor. Where do we go out? Cor pondered for a moment before replying, Why are you asking this? Maybe we are much too clean and shiny, and they can't see us? Corey's eyes widened with realization. Do you mean that we have finally succeeded in being immaculately white? Cor nodded proudly. Did I tell you that if you stop eating sulfur, it would be like this? You were right, and I'm not even toxic now. A little diet never hurts. As Rose watched the conversation unfold with fascination, she couldn't help but voice her question. Are you clouds that can talk? Where you are? As Randy observed the situation with skepticism, he couldn't shake off his doubts about the supposed cute children or clouds. With a shrug, he decided to distract himself by showcasing some complicated karate moves. However, after a few impressive maneuvers, he found himself exhausted and out of breath. Phew, that was intense, Randy muttered to himself, wiping sweat from his brow. Probably one of them got a lucky shot on me. Corey, overhearing Randy's comment, jumped to conclusions. See, they are dangerous. Do they want to take our house and kill us? Martin, trying to diffuse the tension, turned to his daughters with a bemused expression. Well, girls, it seems we've stumbled upon quite the lively bunch. What do you make of all this? Rosalie, gripping her father's hand tightly, whispered anxiously, There are so many of them, Dad. I'm afraid. What are they? Martin glanced around at the bustling activity on the clouds and couldn't help but chuckle. Well, it seems we've stumbled into a cloud community with quite the knack for drama, he replied, trying to lighten the mood. Who knew clouds could be so chatty? Meanwhile, Rosemary, ever the optimist, chimed in with a smile. Maybe they just need some company, Dad. We could be like their unexpected guests. As Corey stepped forward and delivered his blunt revelation, the Clark family listened in astonishment. We are not clouds, he explained matter-of-factly. We are people like you, but without bones and flesh. Anyway, it would be rude to be like that. Rose couldn't help but gaze at the chubby girl standing nearby, whose face and hair indeed resembled a cloud. Beside her stood Cor, a boy about Randy's age, also from the cloud. And to their surprise, a fluffy named Puffluff bounded up, seemingly from the cloud as well. The fluffy was pastel-colored cloud creature with big sparkly eyes floating against a vibrant blue sky backdrop, surrounded by smaller cloud critters, each with their own adorable features like tiny wings, colorful patterns, and playful expressions. Unable to resist the adorable fluffy, Rosemary scooped Puffluff into her arms, giggling as he showered her with affectionate licks. This is amazing! she exclaimed, her eyes sparkling with wonder. You really look like people, or rather spirits. I don't know how else to describe it. Corey nodded with a smile. We are neither humans nor spirits. Here is our planet, our home. Randy couldn't help but voice his lingering uncertainty. I say so we're not dead? Corey chuckled, shaking his head. Why would we be dead? Here we are very much alive, doing funny tricks and enjoying each other's company. As the Clark family absorbed this newfound understanding, 
they couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and fascination at the extraordinary beings they had encountered in this mysterious realm among the clouds. The Clark family and the two cloud beings, Cor and Cory, ventured out for a walk through the city. They were awestruck by the myriad shades of white surrounding them. From the gleaming ivory of the buildings to the soft pearl of the cobblestone streets, they discovered that white was not just a single color, but a complex tapestry of thousands of hues. However, their amazement was short-lived as they soon learned the strict rules governing the beings of this planet. Referring to them as clouds was met with disdain, as Corinne, the queen of the planet, had established a hierarchy where clouds were considered the most valuable asset. Calling us clouds is an insult, Cor explained, his expression stern. We model the clouds according to strict rules set by Queen Corinne herself. They are the cornerstone of our planet's functioning. The Clark family listened intently as Cor continued to explain the intricacies of their society. Some clouds are used as raw material in the construction of houses or for food, he said, gesturing to the cloud-like structures towering above them. Others are sent to the ground according to precise regulations. Corinne, the regal ruler of this unique world, oversaw the distribution of clouds from each factory with meticulous precision. Every decision was made with careful consideration, ensuring the smooth operation of their society. As the Clark family and their newfound companions were introduced into the cloud factory, they were greeted by a mesmerizing sight. Just like cotton candy, the clouds were sorted into an array of shades. Pink, blue, gray, purple, green, and even multicolored varieties. Fluffy creatures resembling humans busily scurried about, each attending to their assigned tasks with remarkable efficiency. Corinne, the queen of the planet, led them through the bustling factory floor, explaining the different roles and functions of the various clouds. Each shade serves a specific purpose, she explained, her regal demeanor softened by a hint of amusement. From building materials to food and even decorative purposes, every cloud has its place in our society. Randy couldn't help but marvel at the scene before him, his eyes widening in fascination. So, are these fluffy creatures like cloud workers or something? He asked, unable to contain his curiosity. Corinne chuckled, nodding in affirmation. Yes, indeed. They are our diligent cloud workers, ensuring that everything runs smoothly in our cloud-centric world. Meanwhile, Rosemary, ever the adventurous spirit, couldn't resist poking fun at their fluffy companions. I never thought I'd see humans made of clouds, she remarked with a playful grin. But I guess stranger things have happened. As they continued their tour of the factory, navigating through the sea of fluffy workers and colorful clouds, the Clark family couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder and amusement at the surreal yet enchanting world they had stumbled upon. And as they exchanged light-hearted banter amidst the hustle and bustle, they knew that their journey among the clouds was only just beginning. As the queen invited the Clark family and their companions to the palace, excitement mingled with apprehension. However, their journey was soon disrupted by the ominous presence of dark clouds looming overhead. Lightning crackled ominously, striking dangerously close to them. Panic surged through the Clark family as they scrambled for cover, unsure of where to seek refuge. The queen, her regal demeanor replaced by determination, stepped forward to confront the menacing clouds. Stay behind me, she commanded, her voice ringing out with authority as she raised her arms to fend off the onslaught of lightning. 
The air crackled with tension as the queen engaged in a fierce battle with the dark clouds, each clash sending shockwaves through the air. Lightning flashed and thunder roared, threatening to engulf them all in its wrath. Rose, her heart pounding with fear, looked on with bated breath as the queen fought valiantly against the elemental forces. "'Is she going to be okay?' she whispered, her voice trembling with concern. Randy, his eyes wide with awe, watched in awe as the queen's powers seemed to falter under the relentless assault. "'Hang in there, your majesty,' he called out, his voice laced with urgency. Kor and Corinne, their faces etched with determination, stood by the queen's side, ready to defend their home against any threat. "'We won't let them defeat us!' Kor shouted, his voice resolute despite the chaos surrounding them. As the battle raged on, the queen's strength began to wane, and she stumbled under the force of a particularly powerful lightning strike. For a moment seemed as though all hope was lost. But then, with a steely determination in her eyes, the queen rose to her feet once more, her resolve unshaken. For a while, we'll be safe, she declared, her voice echoing with a mixture of exhaustion and determination. With the immediate danger abated, the queen led the Clark family and their companions to safety, their hearts heavy with the weight of the battle they had just witnessed. And as they entered the palace, they knew that they had only glimpsed the surface of the mysteries that lay within the Cloud Kingdom. The palace shines with shades of white, adorned with hints of gold and silver, a testament to its grandeur. Surrounding the queen are countless attendants, tirelessly working to ensure her pristine appearance, making her sparkle with an otherworldly brilliance. As the queen ushered the Clark family and their companions into the safety of the palace, she revealed the sinister truth behind the menacing black clouds with lightning. They were the creations of King Blackfly, the greatest enemy of her empire, who had long sought to seize control of her kingdom. For years we have resisted his attempts to conquer us, the queen explained, her voice tinged with determination. But he is relentless in his pursuit of power she continued, explaining that their only hope of returning to Earth lay in stealing King Blackfly's lightning rod, a powerful artifact that held the key to their escape. The fluffy Puffluff whimpered and trembled with fear at the mention of King Blackfly's name, his disheveled fur bristling in alarm. It was a comical sight amidst the seriousness of the situation. Inside the palace, the furnishings were as fluffy as the clouds themselves, with soft cushions and plush rugs adorning every surface. Rosemary couldn't resist running her hands over the velvety textures, marveling at the unique sensation. Meanwhile, Rosalie's eyes sparkled with delight as she discovered a platter of cloud fruits nearby. With their enticing aroma and delectable flavor, the fruits were a delightful surprise in this ethereal realm. She eagerly reached out, plucking one from the bunch and taking a tentative bite. Her face lit up with pleasure as she savored the sweet and juicy taste, relishing in the unexpected culinary delight. As the Clark family and their companions settled into the palace, they knew that their journey to steal the lightning rod and escape the clutches of King Blackfly would be fraught with danger. But with the Queen's guidance and the strength of their newfound friendships, they were determined to succeed, no matter the odds. As the Clark family, accompanied by the fluffy Puffluff and their cloud companions, embarked on their mission to steal King Blackfly's lightning rod, they gathered together to devise a complex plan. Rose 
All right, everyone, we need a foolproof plan to get that lightning rod. Any ideas? Randy, how about a distraction? We could create a diversion to draw attention away from the rod while someone sneaks in to grab it. Cor, that's a good start, but we'll need something big to distract King Blackfly and his minions. Corinne, what if we stage a fake attack on the palace gates? It'll draw their attention away from the rod while we make our move. Rosemary, that's risky, but it could work. We'll need to be quick and coordinated. Rosalie, maybe we can use the cloud fruits as bait. We'll lure them away with the promise of a feast while someone slips in unnoticed. Puff Luff. Woof woof. I'll distract them with my irresistible cuteness while you guys do the sneaking. Rose. That's a great idea, Puff Luff. We'll use you as the ultimate distraction. Martin. While they're focused on Puff Luff, I'll sneak in and grab the lightning rod. But we need to be prepared for anything. Randy. I'll cover you, Dad. If anything goes wrong, I'll be ready to jump in and help. Cor and Corinne and I will provide backup from the sidelines, ready to assist if needed. All right, team, let's put this plan into action. We only have one shot at this, so let's make it count. With their plan in place, the Clark family and their companions set off towards Blackfly's palace their hearts filled with determination, and their minds focused on the task ahead. Little did they know, their daring mission would lead them into the heart of danger and adventure as they faced off against King Blackfly and his forces. As the Clark family and their companions were swiftly transported by their cloud friends to the borders of the palace, they marveled at the breathtaking view. The border was marked by a shimmering barrier of swirling clouds, extending as far as the eye could see. Upon their arrival, they were greeted by Emperor Blackfly with a friendly smile, though his arm bore a visible wound. I tried to save you earlier, he explained, his voice tinged with gratitude. But the great Queen Corinne thwarted our attempts. Rose, her curiosity piqued, couldn't help but inquire about the purpose of their mission. The Emperor's expression turned solemn as he revealed the dire circumstances facing his kingdom. In the ancient prophecy, it clearly says that five heroes will save us, he explained. Save us from diseases, from the darkness we have been in for so many years. Heroes to save you, from what? Rose asked, her brow furrowing with concern. Don't you see? We long to be immaculate, healthy whites once more. Randy, ever the pragmatist, nodded in understanding. So you're counting on us to fulfill this ancient prophecy and bring light back to your kingdom? The emperor nodded, his eyes reflecting a mixture of hope and desperation. Yes. The prophecy foretells of five heroes who will bring an end to our suffering, and with your help, we may finally break free from the darkness that has plagued us for so long. As the Clark family and their companions walked through the kingdom, they were struck by the stark contrast to Corinne's realm. Everything was shrouded in shades of gray and black, with suffering creatures at every turn. It was a bleak and desolate landscape, a testament to the deep impact of Corinne's decisions on her subjects' lives. The Emperor explained how Corinne's choices had profoundly affected them, extracting the good clouds for her own realm while leaving them with scraps. For us, there is nothing, he lamented, his voice heavy with sorrow and it has been this way ever since I dared to question her decisions for our people. He went on to describe how Corinne wielded the power to extract the goodness from the clouds, leaving him with only a scepter that served as a reminder of his powerlessness. From time to time I use it to scare her into submission, he admitted, his eyes filled with resignation. 
Randy, ever curious, asked if he could examine the scepter closely. The emperor handed it over without hesitation, allowing Randy to inspect it with a furrowed brow. Sensing an opportunity, Rosemary motioned for Randy to make a run for it, hoping to escape with the scepter and bring it to Corinne, as was the first plan. But to her surprise, Randy seemed to understand something deeper. As he held the scepter in his hands, Randy realized that stealing it would only perpetuate the cycle of fear and suffering. Instead, he saw the importance of confronting Corinne directly and finding a way to break the hold she had over her kingdom. With newfound determination, Randy returned the scepter to the emperor, his gaze unwavering. We won't run, he declared, his voice filled with resolve. We'll face Corinne together and put an end to this darkness once and for all. With their hearts united and their purpose clear, the Clark family and their companions set out to confront Queen Corinne, ready to challenge her authority and bring hope back to the suffering kingdom. Then the Clark family and their companions, King Blackfly and his army, were suddenly confronted by the menacing presence of Queen Corinne, ready to do battle. Corinne, Taken aback by the unexpected turn of events, addressed the Clark family with a mixture of surprise and disdain. I understand that you want to stay here forever with Blackfly? She questioned, her voice dripping with skepticism. Martin, his resolve unwavering, stepped forward to address the Queen. We cannot close our eyes to such injustice, he declared firmly, his voice echoing with determination. We must stand up against tyranny and fight for what is right. With tension thick in the air, both sides prepared for the impending clash. The air crackled with anticipation as the two opposing forces faced off, each determined to emerge victorious. Randy, his gaze fixed on King Blackfly and his army, couldn't help but feel a surge of adrenaline coursing through his veins. It's now or never, he muttered to himself, his fists clenched in readiness. Meanwhile, Rosemary exchanged a worried glance with Rosalie, silently steeling themselves for the battle ahead. We can do this, she whispered, her voice tinged with determination. As the first blows were exchanged, the battlefield erupted into chaos with clouds swirling and lightning crackling ominously overhead. The sounds of clashing weapons and battle cries filled the air as both sides fought fiercely for control. In the midst of the chaos, alliances shifted and loyalties were tested as the outcome of the battle hung in the balance. With every passing moment, the tension mounted as uncertainty loomed over who would emerge victorious in this epic struggle between light and darkness. As Rose discreetly approached Queen Corrine, her heart pounding with determination, she swiftly tore the necklace from the Queen's neck. The necklace, adorned with jewels that glowed like lightning, seemed to pulse with power as Rose hurled it towards Randy. With lightning reflexes, Randy caught the necklace and, in one fluid motion, joined it with King Blackfly's staff. The two artifacts merged seamlessly, radiating a blinding light that engulfed the entire battlefield. As everyone shielded their eyes from the brilliance, a soft voice cut through the chaos. We have arrived in Miami. Please disembark. You are the only passengers left on the plane. With a jolt, the Clark family awoke from their dreamlike state, tears glistening in their eyes. Randy rubbed his eyes in disbelief. What a strange dream, he murmured, his voice tinged with wonder. We were all together in an incredible land, and Rosalie continue. And there were so many clouds? Music